He almost got one right there. Matter of fact, I think he did. Steve Smith was doing the driving. And it is on, I think, Grant Hill. It is. He's got four. And that's not smart basketball by Grant. He needs to be smarter than that. He needs to give Steve a little bit of room. And also, Armstrong needs to go double-team him and take the ball, so make sure that Grant doesn't pick up that fourth foul. I like the double-team idea a little bit more than giving Steve Smith the room. <laughs> well, I'd rather give up a basket than get Grant out of the game. Here's Smith working on McGrady, Duncan on top, to Clerk in his way, but that's easy work for Tim Duncan, who in the contest has 14 points. That's a tough shot. Yeah. I mean, point guards have a tough enough time making that shot, let alone seven footers. McGrady trying to go inside from the wing. Can't, lost it out of bounds. Let's set the lineups now. The Spurs with Bowen, Steve Smith. I didn't see a lot of time in that first half. David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and 19-year-old Tony Parker from Paris, France. I think Doc is testing Parker a lot more now. They're becoming more aggressive and going out and meeting him just to force him to commit a lot sooner. They're trying to scoop it inside and angry with himself because of the miss because he certainly had a gap to shoot. A lot of bounds it goes. The Magic out there with McGrady, Andrew DeClerc, Grant Hill with four personal fouls, Armstrong, and Horace Grant. Well, you can see Parker's quickness on that penetration. At the same time, you can see the one concern that I have of watching him play is he's six foot one, about a buck seventy, and he just doesn't have the size and strength to go in there and finish. And he's not used to playing against these kind of athletes. McGrady with a nice series of turns and twists, and it's inside with the rebound for Duncan, who now has nine in the game. Parker, 0 of three, crashing into Armstrong, digs it back out, and controls on top. Parker again, down the lane and short. Well, every time Parker has penetrated, you know, it shows courage, but I want to see if he can knock that outside shot down consistently. His penetration is good, as you see now. You know, he's penetrating to the basket. He's not afraid to take the hit. He lays it up that time, though. And you can see how quick he is, because Darrell Armstrong is a very quick defender. He's just going around him at will. I want to see if he can hit that outside shot, though, Dan, particularly with those two big guys in the middle to open it up for him. Shot clock was down. Nice defense by DeClerc. Duncan is errant, and here comes Armstrong the other way. Armstrong has put in one point tonight in 17 minutes. They need more from him on offense. As he finds McGrady working on Bowen. Shot clock at nine. Double inside, twisting out of it all, giving to DeClaire. He lost it inside. Hill, shot clock at four, and they blow it dead with a three-second violation inside. And that is the seventh for Orlando turnover. Anybody that plays with Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill has to be ready once they penetrate to receive the basketball. Because both of them are excellent at hanging in the air and dropping the ball off. And both of them draw help so quickly. Matt Rivers has already been slapped at the tee in the opening moments of the game. and continues to jaw on the sideline. One more and he's gone as Tony Parker works on Armstrong. Doubled by DeClerc and outside for Bowen. Rifled in inside. Knocked away by Grant. That is the ninth turnover by San Antonio. Horace Grant. Rebound by Tim Duncan. Well, and again, we, you know, we talk about Orlando's team, but McGrady and Grant Hill aren't near as effective as they are when they don't have when they have perimeter shooters on the court with them. And right now, they just don't have a great perimeter shooting team. David Robinson's game is on tonight. 17 points in 21 minutes. Spurs are shooting 50%. Orlando is shooting 34.5%. Grant Hill, 4 of 11 tonight. Across the lane. Wrecked and fouled on the play. As you can see, every time that those guys get the ball, there's nobody that can guard him. Bruce Bowen's supposed to be one of the best, better defenders in basketball. There's no way he can guard Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, it just demands so much attention to stop those guys. If the big guys can finish, like we've seen Don Reed, who's coming into the game right now, and Miller and Garrity can spread the court, I don't see how you can defend these guys. Grant Hill, as Don Reed comes in and Andrew DeClerc goes out. The, the investment that the Magic have made in Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady is truly staggering. Each given seven-year contracts, each making $93 million. You do the math, and you know that's, a, that's about as much as a franchise. Here's Parker.
Shot clock at nine. They double Duncan. He kicks it out to Parker, who has not made a shot yet. And John, you want to see that as Duncan throws it up and hits. Well, I want to see him take that shot. Even he isn't, he isn't even looking to take it. He's looking to penetrate every time he gets the ball. Tim Duncan has a double-double with 16 points and 10 rebounds. Every game this season, all five, he's had a double-double. And has more double-doubles than any other player in the NBA over the last five years. Hill down the lane looking for two. Duncan tucked it. Here comes Parker, three on one. To Smith. Smith. Getting a pass from Tony Parker. And just stay in it. We're going to keep the pressure on them. We got to keep the pressure on them. All right? Hey, if we get on makes right now, let's go blue a couple of times. Okay? Just a couple of times. Doc Rivers' team has been outscored by the San Antonio Spurs, 8-2, to two, in the first 315 of this third quarter. I like that timeout by Doc right there, because when Steve Smith scored on the break, you could see them kind of starting to drag their heads, and that's one thing you got to make sure you're doing as a coach, is make sure they stay in it mentally and get their rejuvenate their energy. Here's Armstrong against Parker, a little shove off, and a good move. The shot was there, and a foul called on Parker put Steve Smith and a 19-year-old kid out there, there's no way it's going to be the same kind of defense as it is with Terry Porter, Danny Ferry, who's a little bit tougher, and uh, Derek Anderson. So this is going to take some time. Sacre Blue, The Frenchman has finally had a shot. It's seven points. Is that is that right between your eyes and French? Yes! <laughs> Here comes Hill. Oh, and a nice move inside with a lot of congestion against the glass, and he's got 14. Well, particularly when he's going in there with Duncan and uh, Robinson. Parker again thought about another shot. Armstrong quickly converges. What about his shot? Then? Well, he shoots a set shot, so it's hard for him to get the shot off, so he's probably going to have to be more of a penetrator than a jump shooter out there because of that. Smith to Duncan. That's the amazing thing about Duncan, though. Duncan can shoot that ball off of the catch. He can shoot it off the dribble, and he's a great post-up player. He's just very difficult to guard without help. He's a pretty good player, that Tim Duncan guy. He was second MVP vote of the season ago behind Allen Iverson. And a show. And foul. It's called on 32-year-old Steve Smith, who's taking the place of the now-retired Sean Elliott. 11 seasons, part of that 99 championship team. And they did not have him late in the season in the playoffs last year like they wanted against the Los Angeles Lakers. And that... It was uh, like playing with a hand tied behind your back because he meant so much to the Spurs. Armstrong to Grant to Hill. Shot clock at three. Hill's got a fire and does and misses. Rebound by Robinson, who corrals his fourth rebound tonight. And Tony Parker the other way. Nice steal by Reed with Armstrong taking it the other way. Well, we got a good one going on in Miami, in Seattle, in the heat. For more coverage on that, back to Atlanta we go at Ernie Johnson. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. The score is 80 to 80. The Sonics in the heat with a couple of seconds to go. We're going to take you down to Miami for bonus coverage. Eric Reed and Ed Pinckney will have the call. It has been a 13 to 2 run by the Sonics, which has tied this game up at 80. Miami with the ball. Here's bonus coverage. From 17 points down in a game they have never led. And now the Heat will try to win it in the final two seconds of regulation. It's LaFonso Ellis. Boy, up. Had a good look at it. Well, the Sonics went two overtimes before winning in Orlando last night. Nate McMillan's team will have to dig even deeper as they go to overtime here in Miami tonight. Now, Ellis had a decent shot. And so it is 80 to 80 as they head to OT. Nate McMillan saying before the game he knows his guys are going to be exhausted after winning in double overtime in Orlando. And our Orlando's guys saying much the same thing as they go to San Antonio tonight. This one heads to OT. We'll keep you posted. Let's go back to Jeff. Good one there because the Sonics played a double overtime game last night against this 
Orlando team. There's Tony Parker at the free throw line. And while you were away, he went flying in with the reverse. He's got six points in the third quarter. Ten for the game. And he gives the San Antonio Spurs their biggest lead tonight. What a great start for Seattle, though. Being able to come on an on East Coast trip and beat Orlando one night. And take it squeak by Miami. Which, that would be a great start to a road trip. Huge start. Here comes Grant Hill. Four speed McGrady. Throws it away. Eight turnovers now for the Magic tonight. Well, the road sets the tempo also for the Spurs defensively because he's so aggressive. It even became contagious with Smith. Smith was playing Hill and trying to deny him the ball. But I like this kid. I mean, he definitely has confidence. I'd love to see how he reacts if David and Duncan aren't going as well, though. Missing a three and picked up by Hill. One three-point hit tonight for the Magic in seven tries. Six three-point hits for the Spurs. They're six of nine. What defense by Bruce Cole? Here comes Parker. Driving inside and gets the foul. He speaks very heavy. French Anderson has rejected by Tim Duncan. Well, the Spurs began a uh, very cold 35% since and a blistering 63% pace. Speaking of cold the magic, have now missed their last five in a row. Grant oh, Hill down the lane, counted for two. When he explodes, baby, clear the deck because he can fly and did right there. John, you were saying today you think he's as versatile a player as you've seen in the NBA. No, I, I definitely, I mean, and I'm talking about the level of competency at the things that he can do. I mean, he passes the ball well. He definitely can set up people. You start to hear about big people playing all positions, but he plays a lot of positions extremely well. Then he's got 12 rebounds on top of the 16, now 17 points. Well, he really knows how to play, but you know, one thing that I've seen, I've noticed in this game in person is he does not have the same explosiveness that he had before the injury, and you wonder if he'll get that back just in time. Duncan on top. Here comes Parker. Thought about three. Hudson got right on it. Well, again, his shot takes a little while to get off because he shoots that set shot. So he does a good job patiently and poised and penetrates and finds it. Antonio Daniels on the perimeter. And look at the hustle of Malik Rose inside for the San Antonio Spurs. And a nice steal as Orlando is coming the other way. Another turnover for the Magic. And they now have 10 in the game. Parker to Duncan. Double teamed inside. It's been a zone defense most of the game for Orlando, and Outlaw was diving in front. Well, now they got Bo Outlaw playing center. Yeah. And McGrady and Hill are forwards with two point guards out there. It'll be interesting to see how they defend Duncan and if they get trap and energy. But you also have to wonder about the energy they have left after playing so many minutes last night. McGrady played 54 minutes last night, and Hill played 48. There's Duncan driving into Hill, out of bounds it goes. No call, just out of bounds. With three and a half to play in the third quarter. Kevin Harlan, John Thompson, Danny Ainge, and Craig Sager. We're at the Alamo Dome. San Antonio Hudson shifting his way inside. Well, Hudson, he's quick enough to get by his man, but, you know, you, who do you meet? You meet Tim Duncan in the back. You get a hell of a reward for going by, man. <laughs> Big reward. That's right. Shot clock at 16 for Hill, picked up by Rose. Hudson. And he stepped out of bounds. So now the Spurs out there with Bowen, Antonio Daniels, Terry Porter, Tim Duncan, and Malik Rose. And you can see a skeptical Doc Rivers with his five center, Grady Armstrong, Hill, Bo Outlaw, and Hudson. Very athletic group now for Orlando. Here's Duncan guarded by Outlaw. That's a tough match, as you can see. A tough matchup for anybody, and particularly the Spurs are tough. When David Robinson and Duncan are going the way they're going now, I mean, they're a very difficult team for anybody to coach with. Armstrong has got three points, takes it inside, finds two and a foul. That's what they need from him. He's averaging 16 points a game, but tonight with just five. Well, they're reluctant to switch out, and so Bowen's got one eye on McGrady and one on Armstrong. Armstrong feels it and goes by and gets the finish, has an opportunity for a three-point play. But you see what Doc Rivers is doing out there right now. He's trying to find a way to get as many shooters and scores around Grant Hill and McGrady to get back in this game. Bowen picked up a foul. Bo Outlaw's been taken out. Monty Williams has been brought in. Here is uh, Terry Porter. Most of his great years with Portland, although he started a bunch of games last year for San Antonio and was truly the leader of this team. 
comes in from Miami as a free agent. Daniels to Bowen, driving down the lane, scooping it off to Rose. Wipe it away. Don't count it a foul. And it's on Bruce Bowen. And he picks up his third of the game. A good idea by Bowen to attack the middle of the defense. This loses control of the balance. Good defense right there by Grant Hill, making sure he doesn't get the foul. Magic shooting 34%. Spurs 55%. Armstrong to McGrady. Of course, he's got 14. Outside, Troy Hudson for three. Knocked away, loose outside, retrieved by Porter. Campbell's down the sideline, feeds to Bowen. He thought about three across the lane, lost it inside with a foul. Making things happen with 2.07 to play here in the third quarter. Grant Hill was reaching in. Did Hill get it? He's got five. Grant Hill has got five personal fouls. Patrick Ewing will trudge off the bench and set the check in. Patrick played nine minutes with six points in the first half as Hill will now leave and some size increase in Orlando's five. Duncan against Ewing and double by Armstrong. To go inside and then Eric Cass a turnover by Tim Duncan. We had a full head of hair this morning when we saw the practice. And a little goatee going and uh, it's gone. The way, the way shooting free throws tonight, he may grow that hair back. Oh, and I was going to say, that's the effect that Ainge has on you. He causes your, he causes your hair to fall out. That's right. Here's McGrady over Bowen on the clock. He makes it work inside. Tracy McGrady has now put in 16. And I think that's the shot right there that's going to make Tracy McGrady one of the, the top player in basketball, possibly, if he can make that in-between jumper, that little 15 to 10-footer, because we know he can get to the basket. It's a shot you don't see that much, Dan. No, you know, it's the kind of shot that Michael Jordan perfected. Duncan had a whale of a pass. It was a bullet thrown inside, and Spurs could not convert. Brady with the drive on Smith and takes it inside. Let's get an update from Atlanta and Ernie Johnson. Okay, hello, all right, Kevin. Listeners. Uh oh, am I still it's, on? Uh, yeah. No, I'm on now. Oh, Kevin. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's uh, let's go to more bonus coverage of Miami and Seattle. It is an 85 to 85 game now because Gary Payton just hit a three-pointer. It's about 22 seconds to go. We turn it back over to Eric Reed and Ed Pinkney for bonus coverage here on TBS. Jones and Brian Grant on the floor with them. Well, the game tied at 85. We are in overtime and may be looking at another unless the Heat can find a hero here on the final 13 seconds. Hoping to take the final shot and walk off. And Jones was doubled and fouled. And the Sonics with the foul to give there. And the Heat will inbound with five and a half seconds remaining in OT. And Pat Riley will talk this one over. I mean, a lot of time off the clock. And Miami does not get a clean look. Have 5.5 here again. Uh, Eddie Jones possibly an option uh, to look. Brian Quinn. While they're in a timeout, let's show you what happened uh, in the in the time just before we hit the air with the bonus coverage. There was the acrobatic bucket by Eddie Jones. So Miami was sitting up by three, 85-82. Gary Payton, the pump fake, and the three-pointer to tie the game up at 85. And Bad Riley calling a timeout at that point. You saw the Sonics with a foul to give. Fouling with a shade over five seconds to go, prompting another timeout by Pat Riley. Meantime, the game you're watching here on TBS, the Spurs on top of the Orlando Magic, 74 to 59. We'll be taking you back to the Alamo Dome for more of that as they play with about three minutes to go in the third period. But right now, we are in bonus coverage. Seattle, a team like Orlando that played last night. In fact, Seattle won that game in double overtime, had to travel to Miami. And that's where they are tonight. Tired. But in overtime, tied up at 85. And we'll see what they do in the waning moments here against Vin Baker and Gary Payton and the Seattle Supersonics. And on this road trip, they really feel as though they can make some pay in terms of victories already beating a power in Orlando. 
right here. This ball can get tied up. Five and a half seconds left. The Heat will have Anthony Carter impounding. He's got Brian Grant, Lafonso Ellis, Sam Mack, and Eddie Jones. I'll tell you, Eddie has got to come right to the ball. He's being defended by Peyton last time they switched. Eddie's ball. Here he goes for the win. Oh! Yeah! For the lead, with a second and seven tenths left, Eddie Jones with a near impossible delivery. A special delivery for Eddie Jones. You want to be the go-to man, you got to come through in the clutch. And Eddie Jones just did with Gary Payton draped all over him. 25 points for Jones, and now the Heat lead by two with 1.7 seconds left. I mean, you, you see there as Lewis is just shaking his head, cannot believe that shot went in. I mean, this, you gotta be kidding me. Tough shot, Eddie does a good job getting open and almost falling down, has the double clutch, but just gets it to fall. Gary Payton, not with enough pressure, well, actually, with a lot of pressure there, should say that, made any double clutch on the shot. And boy, the bench loves it, but still, 1.7 left in this ball game, certainly not over. Here is Eddie Jones on his way back to the hoop, not celebrating, doing the right thing, keeping his mind in the ball game, still not over. Remember in the Heat's win over Toronto, Jones scored 13 points in the fourth quarter of his 20-point night. Tonight, five points here in overtime for Eddie Jones and a season-high 25 tonight for EJ, along with a season-best nine rebounds. Now, the subject is preserving the victory. You're one stop away, you're less than two seconds away, but the Sonics with some big-time shot makers. I mean, 1.7, that's enough for a quick look at it, but Miami has got to box out. I mean, they have to block out and get this rebound. Brent Barry will look for either Rodmanovic, Baker, Lewis, or Payton. And it's Eddie Jones defending Gary Payton. And here comes Payton to receive it. The three for the win! And that's how close Ooh. the Sonics come to stealing an overtime win in Miami. Ah, the hugs feel good. An overtime win feels simply better. Eddie Jones' jumper with Peyton draped all over him stands up as the game winner. This was a thrilling overtime victory in Miami for the Heat. I'll tell you, your heart had to be in your mouth <laughs> as that shot went up. I mean, you look at this, he gets a wide open look at it, Eddie trailing on the play, and that shot in and out. A little bit frightening how wide open Absolutely. Got for a triple that came this close to winning it for Seattle. I mean, he's at the 25 foot mark when he takes that shot. And nothing going to the bench. They came that close. But the Sonics fall in overtime in Miami, 87 to 85. That's bonus coverage here on TBS. We'll take a break, then take you back to the end. He throws it up and count! What a play by Malik Rowe! And that's a part of Malik's game that has gotten so much better over time is the offensive part. You hear him back at the basket, we've seen him knock down jump shots. We know he has all the energy. But when he can give him some baskets right here, although Monty Williams is really a two or a three man, great hoop. Malik Rose, born and raised in Philadelphia with a big two for the... He did okay at Duke. I think he did, too. Did you ever recruit Ames, by the way, to George? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I would have loved to have recruited him. Then you and he would have coached the team, right? <laughs> that's what he would have yeah, thought. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here's McGrady on top. Ames still not out of reach. The Magic down by 10, as we mentioned before. Down by as many as 17. Good steal by Porter. Ahead to Daniels and flies inside. He is athletic. He's got seven points. His job has been taken away from him, but he embellishes that backup role with a nice performance tonight. With Hudson moving inside on Terry Porter. McGrady getting the loose ball, kicks it to Hill, over to Grant, swings it to Armstrong in the corner for Troy Hudson for two. 
They're hanging in there. They got to make a run. They're picking up the pressure defensively. You just wonder how much energy they have to extend their defense and do what it takes to get ten, make up a 10-point deficit against this tough Spurs team. Daniels to Duncan. Duncan with 22. Bruce Bowen across the lane. Oh, Hill fell. And with that, Bowen had some room to rotate. You know, Bowen is known for being an offensive player, but he certainly is not afraid to attempt his shots and be aggressive there. I certainly think he knows the foul predicament that Hill is in, too. Troy Hudson now with 12 points is averaging 10 a game. That's a lot for a guy coming off the bench. It is, and he's a scorer. He comes in the game and they run a lot of high pick and rolls for him and some spreads, and that's his job. Come in the game and give scoring for the second unit. Great pass to Daniels, who looks for the trailing Rose, who goes over Grant, and it's his second shot in a row. Well, Orlando's got their offensive team out there to try to get him back in the game, but they better find a way to get some stops. 13 points for Rose. Hill finds a crack and squeezes inside. Hook shot with his second try. Hook shot with his third try. And picked up by Antonio Daniels. Grant Hill tonight, 6 of 15. 13 rebounds, so this has been tough. Well, but that's the impressive thing about Grant. For a guy that handles the ball and plays outside, he's not reluctant to go inside and mix it up and bang in there. Hudson missing a three and out of bounds. It goes off of Orlando. They came into tonight two and two, having lost two of their last three. Spurs came in two and two. They've also lost two of their last three. Well, they don't need to just start pushing the ball up the court and jacking up threes, but that's the... If they got the small lineup there. They really don't have a post-up player. McGrady and Grant Hill should be able to create some offense, but that's where they miss Pat Garrity and Mike Miller. I know we've been saying that all night, but this is not even close to the Orlando team that uh, is predicted to be a contender in the East. Bowen driving inside and a foul. So he's attacking again, and that's the thing that, you know, is good about him. A lot of times when the guy's reputation being a defensive player, he doesn't attempt to do anything offensively, but Bowen will look to penetrate, and sometimes he will take the outside shot. Grant picks up his third personal foul. And at the strike, Bowen hits. Avery Johnson now playing with a uh, new contract as a free agent with the Denver Nuggets and playing for coach Dan Issel. He's played in Denver before, actually. Avery's played with almost every team in the league. It seems as Bowen. This is that second shot. But he was the glue. Not only was he the glue, along with Daniels, especially when Derek Anderson got injured, but Avery Johnson was very good friends with David Robinson and a vocal support guy in the locker room. Very outspoken, a leader. Drive inside, Hudson was whacked and fouled as he went to the rack. Duncan is inside, got around Tracy McGrady and puts it in with six and a half to play in the game. 24 points now for Tim Duncan with his 14 rebounds. A double-double in every game so far. This is the fifth game of the season for the Spurs. Armstrong swings it over to Hill, who drives the baseline and can't find two, but does find his sixth foul, and he's gone. He fouls out with a six performance from the field. He had 17 points in 29 minutes. He had 15 rebounds. That might be a blessing for Doc to get Hill out of the game. He's uh, He looks a little bit tired out there. They haven't been getting him any open shots. He doesn't have the shooters for him to create to get some easy baskets for out there and give him the rest he needs. Yep. Tell you what, though, he does an awful lot of things on the basketball court. Again, he has every reason to, to be tired. I, I just think when this team gets healthy, as Danny has indicated, it's going to be something to see. Here's Parker. The numbers on Hill tonight. Go Outlaw takes his place. On top to Daniels, wide open, Bowen for three. And he can't connect from outside. Picked up by Armstrong. Down court, Monty Williams, a former San Antonio Spur, puts it in. Under six to play, 93-81, the Spurs, who have led by 17. And led really most of the game, as Parker calls a timeout, as it goes the other way for San Antonio. The first starting European point guard in the NBA. In all my extensive research, I haven't been able to find any others. <laughs> all afternoon long, Danny. Uh, Marcelinus and Petrovic were both yeah. two guards. Right. Uh, Gergovic wasn't a starter, came off the bench. 
15 rebounds for Duncan now in the game. That's what Parker does very well. He handles the ball well in traffic, and even in traps, he splits, and he can find the open man off of it. His poise is really good for a youngster. Here he comes again, taking it inside. Daniels trying to beat the 24-second shot clock. Buzzer Rose is there, triple team. Didn't get it. It's loose. It's out of bounds. It's off Orlando. We talked about San Antonio's defense. And Greg Popovich, he asked, will my team embrace this defense? They have held the Magic to 35% tonight from the field. Seven different players have blocked the shot. Rose, six rebounds on the offensive glass. Out there with Daniels Duncan. Here comes Parker again. Right down the lane and can't get it to drop. Rebound by Reed. And that's the hardest shot for young players to learn right there. It's that little floater up over the shot blockers. And when he learns that one, that's going to take him to the next level. That's a shot that Steve Nash has learned over the last year or so since he's been in Dallas. Hudson with 15, seven of coming this fourth quarter. Here at the Alamo Dome, coaching four minutes to play in the fourth. Parker to Ferry, who is at a three already tonight and hits another. Danny Ferry has now made it a 43% shooting night above the arc for the San Antonio Spurs. He's got 11. But Danny said so much for that zone. Oh, Back at gosh, one exactly. two zone out there. So I'll show you what I think of your zone. Here comes Parker again. Malik Rose, shot clock down to nine. Little two-man game with Ferry and over. The rookie, Stephen Hunter, out of DePaul. He hits it. Malik is really playing offense a lot more confidently. Yeah. Danny, and watching him out there. And he, he's just such a hard matchup because he also has strength and agility. He plays bigger, actually, than his size, but yet he's so strong. He's very long arms. He's got a lot of energy and good athleticism, but his offensive game has evolved. He's become a very good passer. Watching him tonight, that's one thing, Coach, I've never seen him do. I've seen him knock down the jump shots, but I haven't seen him ever pass the ball the way he has tonight. Well, in particular, you take David or Duncan out, and didn't you put him in? That's a difficult matchup because even though he doesn't look tall, he definitely plays big. Timeout taken. And a nice debut for Tony Parker. We are hoping to get an interview with him. We tried to talk to him at halftime, and then the coach, Greg Popovich, waved us off. But with the game over and a win for his team, 104-89, I am assuming that we're going to get a chance to see him. He does not need an interpreter. And with that in mind, we send it over to Craig Sager. Well, as we were listening to you guys talk, Terry Porter next to me goes, well, you got T.P. Sr. and T.P. Jr. You're the veteran. Tell me about his performance tonight. I thought he did a great job tonight. You know, we... Um, he did a good job of uh, pushing the ball, trying to get in the middle, and trying to uh, create shots for his teammates, and uh, did a good job of recognizing some defenses they tried to throw at us. I give it a pie. First game, C+. Plus. How would you rate your performance? <laughs> Excuse me? How would you rate your performance tonight? Uh, I, don't like, I don't like to say that. I just am um, happy uh, that we win the game, and uh, I try to do my best and try to run the team best I can. 